lot has changed over the past eight years since we took over Management Affairs Company. We're pleased to say that our efforts were not in vain and that our investors have been handsomely rewarded for their faith in our company. Ferris is ahead of the competition in vir virtually every industry ranking, including revenue, profits, profit margin, market share in dollars, stock price, and market capitalization. Many of those victories are by a wide margin, which is characteristic of our rise and prominence in the electric sensor market. Our market share was 31%, while the next runner-up was 21%. Our profits were in excess of 63 million, while the next runner-up had about 22 million. And our market capitalization was 455 million, while the next runner-up was 195 million. After fighting for dominance in the first few rounds, we maintained our lead in most categories up to today. Since we've given, since we've been given control of the company eight years ago, market share has nearly doubled. Our stock price is up nearly 1,400 percent, and profits are up over 2,500 percent. Eight years ago, we outlined our intended strategy. We set the bar high by setting to achieve sales of 300 million, a 20% profit margin, 30% market share, and a share price of 200. We wanted to step forward using a combination of the niche cost leader and broad differentiator. We started our first product in low tech due to the substantial size of the market. After dominating the low tech market, we would set our sights to the high tech market because it would prove to have profitability and revenue. We intended to invest heavily into sales, marketing, TQM, and HR to reduce our costs and increase demand for our products. We proposed significant stock and debt issuance to finance our growth, which we thought other companies would be reluctant to do. Once our investments would be paid off, we would be able to sell our products at a lower price than our competitors. Now over to our strategic analyst over in Calgary. Thanks, Bradley. In general, Ferris stayed true to our plan strategy. The predictions we made eight years ago were reasonably accurate and ultimately placed Ferris as the dominant player in the electrical sensor space. As planned, we took great care to position our products to meet and exceed customer needs, receiving high customer satisfaction in both the high and low tech segments. Aggressive early expansion allowed us the first mover advantage in the low tech market, capturing significant market share as well as increased profits that our competitors were not planning for. Issuing high amounts of stock and debt allowed us to expand early on when most companies were funding themselves through profits. Although our early predictions overestimated the value of the market in 2025 in terms of sales and stock price, we still ended up highly profitable, far more than any of our competitors. While we currently have 31% of the market share, we actually have 49% of the industry profits. Highlighting just how successful we executed our strategy delivering company performance and profitability. The biggest issue that we encountered was inaccurate sales forecasting, which frequently led to products either stocking out or failing to sell enough units to cover our expenditures. We learned a lot from our experiences and will pass on our knowledge to the incoming management team. Back to you, Veronica. Thanks, Linda. Now that we're leaving Ferris in a much better position than we found it, we hope the next management team will do the same. First off, Poor sales forecasting was always a major problem for our company. We often left unfilled demand on the table. To fix fulfillment issues once and for all, we advise that additional capacity be added and that at least 60 days of inventory should be produced in excess of predicted sales. Second, the new management team should develop two new cutting edge products, one for low tech, one for high tech. These new products will help to expand Ferris's market share by serving even more customers than before. Thirdly, the new team should review lowering automation slightly to improve the speed of product repositioning in high tech, which must happen frequently in order to maintain competitive advantage. Finally, we have asked the incoming team to conduct a thorough review of all of our competitors to determine a target for acquisition. We expect that the field will become more crowded as our competitors launch more products and invest in lowering production costs. Andrews is our favorite target, as it is our largest and most profitable competitor. We've learned a lot from our time working on Capson, which has really hammered home the concepts and theories taught in class. Here are some of the more important lessons we've learned. Early strategic planning is key to long-term growth and profitability. Because business growth compounds, the earlier you start working on expansion, the better. Next, leverage is a powerful tool to help a company grow. 
This was an integral part of our business strategy, which helped us gain an edge in the early rounds of Capsin to increase production capacity and capture early market share. Another lesson is that financial statements can tell a lot about a company, not only the financial health of that company, but also what it plans to do in the future based on its allocation of capital. We frequently examined our competitors' financial statements, especially in early rounds, to determine which companies were investing for future growth like we were. A final lesson we feel was most important is not to underestimate competitors, but to constantly be watching and determining ways to counter them. We learned this the hard way in round five, when we were forced to take an emergency loan after underestimating Baldwin's turnaround effort. Capson proved to be an invaluable learning tool, which we feel has prepared us well for future endeavors in business. Thank you.